Hello and welcome to the world of jazz. I'm making this video as a way to introduce and talk about my musical taste to you guys. Although I listen to almost every single genre out there, I probably listen to jazz the most. And so, if jazz were a city, I'd definitely qualify to be an awesome tour leader. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. I'll act as a tour leader and uh, I'll show you around the world of jazz. There are many sub-genres, very interesting ones that I want to talk about and I'm excited to share. First off, we're going to take a stop at jazz rap. Yeah, you heard me right, it's jazz rap. And you know what, I love that combination, so thank god it exists. This is something I can't avoid talking about because I love jazz and I love rap, so you know, the two make a great pair in my eyes. Little history lesson incoming. Uh, although the combination may be a bit surprising to some people, it's actually something to be expected. Both jazz and rap originate from African American culture and also in the same time period, which is during the early to mid 20th century. So having the two of them mixed up is really unavoidable given this historic context. Uh, take a listen to one of the first instances of rap music from this 1950 song, Gotta Let You Go by Joe Hill Lewis. The rapping takes place in the blues track, a different genre from jazz, although very similar. In today's world, jazz rap is still very prominent and it is sung by many popular artists. Although speaking from my experience, it's not easy to notice the elements of jazz while you're listening and that's because they tend to focus more on emphasizing the rap elements. And here is where we make our first music suggestion of the day, Kendrick Lamar's For Free, which is from his TPAB album or To Pimp a Butterfly. And why am I making this suggestion? That's because you literally don't have to be an expert to immediately tell that this is jazz. The jazz is very obvious, the rap is also very obvious, and it tells you right from the very beginning. This ain't free. I mean, baby, you really think you can make a baby name Mercedes with a Mercedes Benz with 24 inch rims, 5% tint, and air conditioning fins? Hell no. So yeah, this has to be one of the best ways to experience jazz rap if you want to get into it. Before we move on, I'd like to also mention Tyler the Creator. That name might sound familiar if you've been watching this channel, and that's because I made an analysis video, which really is just ripped from my English FOA. Anyways, his rap music also has jazz sprinkled here and there, not as obvious as the one in Kendrick's, but it's still there and it's quite good. Definitely a more soft and chill type of jazz. A good example is Smuckers from his Cherry Bomb album. Money, 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 money ain't the motive. What's your name again? Nobody knows it. Don't speak to me, nigga. You not in trouble, and I'm focused. And we have, of course, many, many more, but we're running out of time, so let's press on. Second stop we're making is to the realm of jazz fusion. And by fusion, we mean mashing things together. So what we mean by jazz fusion is to combine jazz with other genres out there. Now, although that is the formal definition, when people say that they listen to jazz fusion, what they really mean by that is they listen to jazz rock. And that is because the jazz rock combination is by far the most popular and widespread. So the term jazz fusion in general, 90% of the time, would be specifically about jazz rock. Although jazz fusion is actually meant to represent a broader range of different combinations. To avoid confusion, I will state now that any further instance of the word jazz fusion in this video corresponds specifically to jazz rock. Now let's get diving into the artists, and surprisingly I wanna say, the Japanese are really good with this stuff. Like really, Japan is just naturally inclined to jazz, and I'm not kidding when I say that their jazz history runs as deep and as intricate as the history of jazz in the US. 
and I am 100% sure that the Japanese would have invented jazz if the US somehow didn't. Now, Japanese jazz is different than that of Western jazz. I can't explain why, I don't study music, but I'm sure most people should be able to tell them apart. So it's always the case that whenever I get bored with Western jazz, it is very easy to just switch to Japanese jazz. And although it's the same genre, they have different styles, so I appreciate that a lot. Now, jazz fusion is led predominantly by Japan, so they have lots of notable artists. I'm gonna list some of my favorites. There's Cassiopeia, T-Square, Masayoshi Takanaka, Hiroshi Suzuki, and many more. Unfortunately, I don't have their names remembered too well, and forgive me if I'm saying it incorrectly. But yeah, I'm gonna play a piece of music from Cassiopeia, because I think they're the best. Uh, this one is from their self-entitled album, and the name of the track is Black Joker. As a little bit of trivia, Japanese video games take inspiration from a variety of jazz fusion bands, and this is especially true during the 70s and the 80s, cause that's when jazz fusion really rose in popularity. You can see examples of this from Nintendo, this one's a classic, Super Mario Bros on the NES, Overworld theme, I'm sure you've heard it like a thousand times before. And here is a clip from T-Square's album Adventure, fourth track titled Sister Marion. So yeah, the more you know. Anyways, we've spent too much time here. Unfortunately, this is our final destination. Let me introduce you to modern jazz. or some people call it experimental jazz. Just from the name, you can tell that this genre is wild, like there are no rules at all. Each musician in this genre is creating their own rules and theory instead of following basic music principles. And that is why you're gonna hear sounds and techniques that you're not even close to feeling familiar with. And that makes it an awesome experience. Of course, like given that you don't get like too scared and like throw your headphones within the first few seconds. You know, the musicians here are stretching and testing the limits of what can be considered as jazz. And if you want to see what that's like, uh, I would recommend BBNG or Bad Bad Not Good. Very talented people, very young as well. I heard that when they published their first album, the oldest member at the time was 20 years old or 21, I can't really remember. But then again, really talented group of people. They have four main albums titled 1, 2, 3, and 4. Yeah, I know right, very original names. Now, one thing you're gonna notice as you climb through the albums from 1 to 4 is that the jazz gets more and more experimental each time. So you know, it's a nice thing if you want to get started. You can pick whichever album you want based on how experimental you would like the music to be. I'm gonna play a sample from their fourth album, last track titled Kashmir. And try to compare that with some classical jazz. This one is Billy Evans Skating in Central Park, 1962. Did you get the difference? I hope that should be enough for you to understand what sets apart modern jazz from classical jazz. Anyways, this is where we make our end. I know that this kind of music doesn't find its audience too well or that easily, but I hope you enjoy it regardless and at the very least you learned a thing or two on this trip. If you have any genre in mind that you want me to talk about, leave it in the comment section below and maybe we'll do another one of these. I listen to almost everything, so there's many options to choose from. Leave a like, a comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.